Hello everyone, welcome to Between Property Talks. Tonight we are very privileged to talk about one of the very important topics in property, which is renovation. And we are very privileged to invite has invited Esmond and he's a registered architect so we'll talk about how do we do renovation without getting caught so have you ever wondered like uh you want to do extension to your uh, foreign maybe extension to the kitchen is it legal or have you ever wonder like you want to buy a property you go to a viewing you go inside there and have a look wow the design and renovation is very good but wondering is all these things legal? So tonight is a topic that we are going to find mm. out with Esmond. And Joanne, perhaps you can introduce Esmond to our audience. Yes, so Esmond is a very dear friend of mine. Uh, he is a registered architect with the Board of Architects of Malaysia. As you can see on the slides, uh, lots of credentials. Uh, he did his Bachelor and uh, Master of Architect in the University of New South Wales, Australia. Uh, don't be fooled by his young looking, young look. <laughs> <laughs> he has delivered many projects, including the Nara Hub Singh 3 Office Tower, Sunway Velocity College, and Gamuda Keyside Mall, and Office Tower, and many more others. So um, everyone rest assured, he's here today to answer all of your questions. So please feel free uh, to type in your questions in our comment box below. Uh, this is not a webinar, it's an interactive style of um, chit-chatting with our dear friend here. So uh, yeah, if you can hear us right now very clearly, please press 1 in our comment box below. Uh, we would like to see, uh, is our connection all okay? Let's see. Yes, if you can hear us loud, please give us a one so that we know you are here. And we can say hello to you. <laughs> hello. Hello, you're Chen Lin. Hi, yeah, thank you so much. Lydia, hi, hello, Lydia. Lydia was our previous speaker in our episode one. So thanks for joining us, Lydia. Benjamin Shao, hello. Joanna Leong, hello. Welcome to the show. So, um, so uh, this show is about 30 minutes. So uh, because today's topic is very interesting, and I'm sure all of you have many questions. So without further ado, we're just going to dive in uh, for uh, tonight's sharing. So I think before we start, uh, maybe we can go through um the content so first of all we have to understand uh, the building permit and then the erection of building the procedure and the consequences of renovation without permit so let's dive in to the first one yeah asmin all right um first uh, first and foremost i want to thank uh, luke and Joan from between properties for inviting me to speak on this uh interesting topic a uh, catchy title, I would say, how to extend, renovate without getting caught. All right. Um, and I hope all the home audience are staying safe and healthy during this MCO period. Um, and hopefully uh, we can get uh, share some knowledge of mine uh, for the new and existing homeowners to go about this uh, house renovation to get their dream home. Okay. Firstly, I'll start off with the first slide. Why building permit is required for renovation? So I think um, this is the burning question. There's always a why for we require building permit. The first, one, the first item is because we need to legalize the renovation. I think legalizing the renovation is very important because um, with illegal stuff, uh, you are subjected to many consequences, which I will highlight later during the talk show. Number two is to ensure that you build within your building boundary, your land boundary and not encroach into other people's land. That's very important. And the third one is to ensure the safety standards are met. Safety standards in terms of the structure and the fire. So we'll dive into that a bit. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Uh, hopefully I get to answer most of them. If not, you can contact me directly. All right. And the most importantly for this, why do we need building permit is to 
I would like to emphasize with protect and safeguard the home buyer's interest in the house, in their house, in their dream house. All right. Okay. Uh, Joanne, if you can... Yeah, so if you're talking about legalization of renovation, so I think to, before we even try to imagine whether right now this house that we're staying right now, is it even legal or not? Maybe you can let us know what constitutes, um, what kind of renovation uh, needs uh, to be legalized. Or rather, like, um, like I think you mentioned just now the erection of building. So what exactly is... Uh, erection of buildings. All right. Uh, sorry, can you go back one slide? We are, yeah. I'll just, I like to highlight the. I've selected these four pictures here, which I think is quite relevant here. The first on the top left corner, you can see that is a demolition work. So part of the erection of building is the de uh, demolition work. The, the, the bottom left corner is the erection of uh, like a structure and stuff like this. The third one is a ready-made house, you know, some, sometimes you have internal partition and stuff like this. The fourth one is more towards extension of the house, all right? Mm, okay, okay. So if you are talking about, for example, you mentioned that erection of, it looks like it's, a, it's an, I don't know, an awning or like some sort of like a pagoda or things like that. So even this kind of thing, you need permit. By the eyes of the law, yes, you need. Why? This is because when you're erecting all these pergolas, uh, awnings and stuff like this, uh, sometimes you're encroaching into the building setback. So there's, oh. there's this kind of, we need to legalize this kind of uh, structure. So we need to do it the proper way. So yes, I would think this uh, pergola and awning requires submission. Even with polycarbonate? Yes, even with polycarbonate, just to be safe. Right. So, uh, audience, take note. Even a five or ten feet kind of like polycarbonate awning, uh, you do need to uh, legalize this sort of erection of building. Am I right? That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Okay. And what? What else? All right. Um, I'll I'll elaborate uh, point by point these four points yeah. of what constitutes the erection of building. The first yeah. one is quite straightforward. It's a new building. What I mean by new building is like an empty piece of land where you just have a building. So that one, of course, is considered a new building. Uh, second one, we go through is renovation. As just now you saw the pictures, uh, add or as, uh, alter the existing structure or any kind of existing plan that you have submitted to the authority. So any deviation from that is considered a building erection. The next one is uh, demolish and reconstruct. What I mean by demolish and reconstruct is to like uh, hack down the walls and you know just adjust according to what you like or what you need. So I think this also falls under this uh, category of erection building. The next one is a very popular one, which is uh, renovating additional floors or adding additional floors. So I think um, a lot of home buyers, you know, are keen or does this kind of um, work to add more floors, you know, more spatial living. I think it's good uh, in terms because um, you know this kind of, to suit this kind of situation that's coming up the new norm, a new norma, which is like work from home, you have more space and yeah. stuff. Like this. So yeah. Okay. As for, yeah, I think a lot of audience are including myself lah, So they'll be right. wondering what kind of renovation is actually uh, we are actually free to do. So called free to do is we do not know to need to go through a lot of hassle or need to go into application and all these things. Can you give us some example, like uh, maybe you can consider minor or some renovation that we can take note of? Sure, Luke. I think that the interior works, interiors like the finishes and stuff like this, like paintings and floor tiles, you know, rather than not, not adjusting, not, uh, not touching the existing structure, building structure, adding um, additional floors or altering the exterior looks, that all can be done. You know, like you change the floor tiles or etc. like this. I think that can be done without some okay. Great. So audience take note. Yeah. So this is uh like renovation, you're doing the flooring, doing the cabinet, all this is good. You can you can go go about it and we don't need to apply for the permit, all these things. And what yeah. about uh what about bathroom? Uh? Yes, man. But no, I think bathroom as long as it's captured in the building plan. Uh, it should be straightforward. You can go ahead. 
Okay. But what about changing my roof? I think nowadays, uh, especially if your property is uh, on a higher ground, uh, you want you want the best sunset view. You know, you would want to actually um, change your rooftop to become like a rooftop balcony or um, uh, yeah, things like that. Do you actually need to oh. apply for a permit? Ah, uh, definitely. This is uh, I would think this is considered mm -hmm. under the renovation because it. You change the building structure because from an awning lightweight structure to a balcony uh, the balcony is considered the rc structure which is concrete structure so that why it's required like those and en certified engineer because we require engineer to submit the structural plan to authority so this is definitely needs a uh, local authority submission okay what about condo high rise uh if i am staying in a condo uh and I want to convert a three bedroom into a two bedroom because I want a bigger master bedroom. So that kind of renovation, what for okay. condo? Mm. Those are considered a uh, demolishing of walls. So first and foremost, um, I think it's good if you consult the MC, which is the management corporation, to request their approval before you proceed with the works. After that, you need to cons uh, probably consult architect because this has something to do with the fire safety. So maybe it's better to consult architect so he can advise you on the proper proper running distance uh, in relation to the fire safety. Okay, we have a question from the audience, uh, Kwa Saikit. Um, he asked, what about a mezzanine floor, steel or timber? in a double volume living um hi kwa psychic thank you for your question it's a very good question because nowadays the uh, houses are getting uh bigger and higher higher volume um in this case the mezzanine floor which is still a timber despite it being lightweight we still require submission this is because uh you have add additional floors to your uh building oh okay yes Hmm. Sure. Any any uh question from you, Liu? Yeah, I think uh just now Esmond has touched about what kind of renovation uh like light renovation is okay to do. So the audience who has just come in, yeah, we are in a topic about renovation and how to do renovation without getting caught. And just That's right. <laughs> Esmond, yeah, Esmond gave some example like do flooring. Yeah, you can uh do like cabinet all this is okay but do take note that like for example if you want to convert uh two one two rooms into a bigger room and all this uh maybe touch about the wall and structure thing all this need a proper procedures yeah that's right actually it reminds me of a question what about partition just plaster uh, between separating two rooms kind of thing uh partition is also um Partition is a lightweight one. Uh, it doesn't okay. touch the structure, but, okay. but I think it's also important because sometimes, um, you know, let's say touch with a fire office in the house. If you have a lot of partitions which deviates from the building plan submitted or approved, this might you might have a problem in terms of the safety, insurance, etc. So, I think it's very safe or better to approach an architect in terms to look at all this, review all this, to capture all these changes. And what about even from commercial? Okay, I think it's sometimes, I think it's quite popular nowadays, especially places that's near universities. Uh, commercial lot owners, uh, especially the second, third floor, they like to partition, you know, 10 rooms out to rent for students, rent to students. And this kind of scenario, do you think they have permit? <laughs> or do they actually need it? I don't think they have permit. Uh, I think to like um you know squeeze as many I know I know it's a commercial terms to squeeze yeah. as many people as possible into a room. Yeah. yeah. But um I the safety aspect of the occupants. Imagine like um 10 people fitting in, how do you like go off the house when something bad happens? So there's a proper way to do everything, you know. I mean in this case I think there's also the integrity of the uh person who rents the house to the students. You know, yeah. sometimes commercial decision needs to take a step back. 
for okay. for his so, integrity. So since we know that the importance of getting a permit and legalizing uh, the renovation, so maybe you can take us through uh, what are the proper procedure to submit such um, application. Sure, no problem. All right, so um, I think the proper procedure for submission requires a professional, professional architect, professional engineer. Okay, so I've simplified the whole building process into four points, namely uh, planning permission, building plan, uh, commencement of works, and issuance of CCC. Let me touch on the planning permission. So for the plan planning permission, it has to do with the outlook of the building, and if you add like a floor area, etc., etc. Like just now the question by Mr. Poir, so adding a mezzanine floor falls under the planning permission submission. Okay. So for the building plan submission, so it's like a uh, we call it BP uh, in the in uh, construction or architecture industry. So that's why you need to submit to the local authority. Uh, involves different departments, building department, engineering department, etc., etc. When you get approval, then we will submit. The architect needs to submit the notice of commencement of work, which is also known as the Borang B, to the local authority. This is to inform the authority that the work will commence on site. So after this submission, the contractor can start work on site. So throughout the construction, which is throughout the point three and point four, uh, we as architects need to uh, constantly review or have site inspection to ensure that the building is built according to the building plan approval. Okay, so this is like a professional integrity of ours to ensure to to ensure that everything goes smoothly. So when so when we think that the building is fit and safe uh, and is constructed according to the building plans and it fulfills the authority requirement only then we will issue the, the last item which is the certificate of completion and compliance so the certificate is very important uh, namely because it it allows the occupants to come in for habitation so this is very important it's also known as the ccc or borang f it's a very important document when you want to sell your house in the future as well, right? Yes, I think so. It's a very important document because this is the this is considered a legal document. Yeah. A legal document. Okay, so uh because as far as I know in Malaysia, the normal way of renovating a house is the first thing we call is not an architect, it's not an engineer, but a contractor. <laughs> You know, something like, you know, oh, you know, hey, who, who do you know very good at renovating, a uh, very reliable contractor, and you go ahead with the contractor, you tell them what to do, you tell them what you want, they do it, the Indon guys come into your house, and they just, yep. you know, start renovating. So, if, if I'm an owner that I want to ensure proper uh, documentation and whatnot, can I, does the contractor actually have that legal capacity to help me to submit all this uh, permit application? Okay, uh, I think it's a very good question, Joanne. Yeah. Uh, firstly, I would like to uh, inform the public that um, all the submissions in terms of renovation, small building, etc., needs to go through an architect because uh, under the Architect Act, he is entitled and he has the right to submit the building plan. Uh, for a contractor, um, sadly to say, no, he does not have the right. If he is not governed under the Act, and he, has, he is not entitled to uh, submit the plans. Oh. So I think, I think the uh, public needs to know about this rather than approaching contractor next time for their house renovation. So thank you for bringing up this point, Joanne. Yeah, and also brings the point that, okay, la, you know, uh, I am very happy with the size of my house. I just want to extend my kitchen um another five to eight feet v very often homeowners or contractors will say hey no problem you know this is uh, no need permit one you know we just go ahead uh if you want to engage an architect you know it's so the process will be very long uh it's gonna be very costly so when 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 when, when you talk about kitchen extension which is the most common in landed properties okay. uh what is the allowance that we can do without you know all this uh, process. Um, I think uh, you're mentioning about extension of kitchen. Yes, correct. So that it, that uh, definitely falls under erection of building. I think um, okay. I would like to say this that um, the public and contractor likes to take the easy way out. Okay. Right. But 
I would like to emphasize and uh, point out that uh, as, as an architect, as a professional architect, we usually uh, we like to safeguard and protect the homeowner's interests. So okay. in terms of getting everything legalized and doing it the proper way. So um, yes, extending three feet to six feet for the kitchen might seem like a small matter, but yeah. when things go south, you know, insurance, oh, you can't claim. It's not legalized and stuff like that. So, you know, there's, there's always a proper way to do uh, extension of house. I believe right. that. Yeah, okay. because I have heard some experience from our clients, right? Uh, having them extend their kitchen, they thought it's a small renovation, but when it comes to a proper uh, procedure, when they come to inspect, the pain point is the authority want them to tear them down. So yeah. this might ha happen also. So our audience, please take note because uh, you spend a lot of money uh, you dream to have a bigger room size or bigger kitchen. However, if you really go beyond the setback line, yeah. So the pain point is they will ask you to tear down and then give you someone things like this. And, and I would like to add on Luke that you might not know how much their fine is going to cost you. So apart from uh, tearing down, demolishing, which you already lose the money, you incur more penalty costs. You yeah. don't know the penalty is subject to authority. Uh, this yeah. one penalty is the million dollar question. Maybe I'll just highlight later in my slides. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have a question from our audience. Uh, okay. He Chong. Uh, he asks, "Do I need to have a permit for having a visually temporary space of a container office or movable structure within the property, such as a bungalow land?" Movable structure permit. Um, thanks, Chi Chung, for your uh, question. I think um, because this one uh, constitute sometimes it is, as I have said just now, it, uh, the safety of the occupants within the house is always the priority. So, yes, you might just silently build a wall or a temporary structure or whatever visually temporary space that blocks everything, but ultimately we are just concerned on the safety of the people within the building yeah yeah i think uh one of the one of our audience just wanted to um highlight did you from michael chong uh did you say that polycarbonate awning also needs approval maybe we can just highlight that again because it's such a common thing for owners to do now it's just a polycarbonate for your laundry or you know hangout area and okay um Okay, I, I, I get this question. Thanks, Michael, for your question. Yeah. I think it's a very good question and relevant question. Uh, we have approached the authority from different councils uh, regarding this uh, polycarbonate awnings. Do we need to submit stuff like this? So um, different authorities give me different answers. Um, some authority just say, submit just for record purpose. Some say right. submit because, you know, just to legalize items to avoid penalty and stuff like this. So my advice to the public who wants to do polycarbonate awnings and stuff like this, yeah. just to safeguard your interest, I think it's better to some. Mm. Okay, so when we talk about the process, uh, the four um, overall steps that we need to do to do the submission, what is the timeline like from the day that you engage an architect until the day you get you can start work. Maybe that's a more important question, especially for those that can't wait to move into their new house, you know? Okay. Uh, this is a very good question because yeah. everyone plans to move in according to a certain pros prosper date or auspicious date. Yeah. So, um, as I to prepare the building, uh, drawings, so we, we have encountered planning permission takes up uh, one to three months. Uh, similarly for building plan submission, one to three months. So maybe the average comes up to about four to six months before you can start work to get the approval. Wow. That's pretty long. What about the cost? I think that's also very important. Maybe many audience would like to watch their pocket and renovation is all about cash flow. And now on top of that, I need to hire an architect to submit drawings and get the approval. So what is the cost that we are talking about? Um, I think the cost uh, is always based on 
uh, scale of minimum fees. Uh, we are we architects are governed by the scale of minimum fee rules. It's set by the board of architects. So usually we follow our professional fee based on that that scale of minimum fees. Okay. 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 Hmm. So audience, uh, yeah, tonight we have just touched about what are the proper renovation. And also we went through the submission procedure. We talked about how long it will take and what kind of uh, cost it will, it will take for the proper architecture as well. So if you have any questions, uh, please type down and let us know. Yeah, we are here uh, to answer you queries. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, now the million dollar question. What happened? That's right, the million dollar really? question. Yep. <laughs> yes, because before you jump in, there are actually some questions people are already asking. Yes. What happens if you do a renovation without a permit? I think this is a question that a lot of people wanted to know. Yeah. The highlight of the night, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, maybe you can go to my next slide. Okay. All right. Um, so. What, do you, what happens if you do renovation uh, without a permit? So uh, in the act, there are three kinds of uh, renovation without permit uh, or fine that you can uh, find yourself getting into. The first one is um, renovate pending or without a perm approval. Number two is did not submit a structure plan, deviates from the approval or did not follow authority direction. And the third one is uh, no building approval. So I would like to go uh, into each one, just a very brief, briefly, so just so the public can understand uh, what is happening. Okay, so the first one is uh, renovating pending or without approval. So what this, what this means is you have already submitted your building plan, but you just can't wait for two months to get your approval out and you just start work. So hoping that authority won't come. So uh, bad news for you, let me highlight that uh, if you do so, you might incur, uh, you know, the fine is stated there. Uh, I wouldn't say that because it might hurt your pocket. So, and it, the, on top of the money, it, they might ask you to alter or demolish the build work. Okay. So mm. no imprisonment, lah, huh? No, <laughs> according to that, no. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, the second second one I would like to highlight is uh, did not submit structure plan, uh, deviates from the approval, or did not follow authority direction. What do you mean by structural plan? So structure plan is like uh, it comes in hand, it comes in when you add uh, additional floor to your house. So uh, the engineers, namely the structure engineers, required to submit the structural calculation. In uh, this, he will take into consideration the life load, the dead load and he needs to submit to the authority. This is to ensure that the additional floor slab that you added is safe and fit for purpose. Okay, deviates from approval, which um, whatever is submit, let's say you have three rooms when you do the submission, and by the end of the construction, you have five rooms. So that is what, that's, it, that's an example of deviates from the approval. The third one is, you know, follow authority direction. So I can, this one, I can give you an example, but like, Authority asked you to set back 20 feet, you did not do that, you know, extension of awning, etc. So this one might incur you some costs. And um, the interesting point about this is like if you continue to do the work and continue for the to uh continue doing the offense, uh you'll you'll be charged like a thousand dollars a day, you know. So I think it's pretty hefty fun. Right, yeah, it yeah. is, it is, it is a lot. And the yeah. third one. All right, the third one is where I think majority of the public falls into, whereby they just ran away without doing any submission. So that yeah. is the most dangerous one. Um, so this one, uh, the fine is a lot, as you can see on my slide. It's like not less than five times, but not exceeding 20 times the prescribed fees. Uh, so imagine your fee is like either the five times or 20 times your submission fee. So I would stay away from this if I were uh, the public. So, yeah. Okay, but uh, there's one question from Yo Chen Lim. Um, quite a good question. What happened if I renovated and realized now after this session that 
oh my gosh, it's all illegal. Though Marjorie's has not yet compounded, should I do anything to my disadvantage? Okay, thank you, uh, AR Yo, for this question. He's also an AR, he's my study colleague, so oh. I studied with him for part three. Okay. Yes, I know. Uh, so I know it's illegal, but um, maybe you can talk to the authority on this matter, uh, discuss how to go about this. I think it's always good to consult the authority. Hey, we have done this. Uh, what can we do to mitigate the situation? So I would think uh, you should turn the disadvantage into advantage for yourself and your health and your development. So can we actually, um, after we've done a re renovation, for example, without the building approvals, uh, now that we are realizing it's illegal uh, and we want to do something about it, uh, is it too late to now engage an architect to draw out uh, or to do something about it, to resubmit? I think it's never too late. It's never too late oh. because... Uh, you might not know uh, down the road something might happen. So I think it's appropriate to document whatever that you have done, despite, okay, maybe because they did not know that it is illegal beforehand. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, as a proper way of doing things, I think they should uh, document it for the future because you're just right. not talking about like one week down the road or two weeks down the road because you're talking about a house is like 10 years, 20 years. So yeah. I, think it's, uh, I think it's more appropriate to document whatever extension, illegal extension that you have done and uh, see what the authority comments. Okay. Thank you. I think that's very well answered. Um, okay. Esmond, uh, I guess, right, for yep. person who has gone through some renovation, they heard, of, they heard about this uh, person called draft person. So can you like also let us know, the audience know, what is the difference between draft person? Because I heard they're actually promoting a uh, draft person can do the same thing as architect then go through the same uh, procedure so like that so can you uh, explain to us like what are the di distinction also okay thanks luke i think it's a very good question because um the building industry is filled with uh, different players architects uh, engineers uh, qs and also draft person so i think draft person uh, it's actually stated in the act, clearly stated in the act, that they are allowed to do the drawings uh, and submit only if um, they are registered with a particular council. Mm. Okay. And, okay, I would like to add, add on to this that they are not allowed to submit more than two story, which involves concrete structure and steel structure. So anything related to structure, I don't think the draft person can submit. This is clearly stated in the act. Okay. Okay. So things to take note, even though because a lot of contractor will recommend draft person, yeah, like Esmond mentioned, there are a lot of criteria, different uh, kind of uh, professions. So the proper way is also go back to uh, architect, register architect. Yeah, I, th I think, uh, sorry, sorry to add on, Luke, I think the architect are the, uh, is the main key player in the building industry. Uh, firstly, um, and most important is because the issuance of CCC. So architect is responsible for the CCC, uh, which is the Certificate of Completion and Compliance. So only the architect can issue this. So everything, uh, he must be responsible for everything. So I think it's very important to highlight this to the public yeah. because maybe they, they are not too sure what does an architect do. So uh, here to clarify it. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> it's very good because... Um, Maybe many of us, we always think of, because architect is a, is a, it's a professional uh, body, it's, it's, it's governed by a professional body. So things like, seriously, things like the awning thing, I still cannot get, wrap it around my head that we still need to get approval. And I have to come to Esmond and say, okay, Esmond, you know, I just did my awning. So what should I do now? You know, things like that. Uh, I think right now uh, it's so much clearer to us that the, the first person you, you should go to when you are thinking of renovating or you need to seek consultation is not, not your contractor. It's an architect. It's not an engineer, but it's your architect. So um, not, do not take the easy way out, like what you said, uh, because it's better to be safe than sorry. Uh, we don't want to fork out more money uh, to, um, to pay the fine as well as to... Uh, 
demolish the things that we have done to the to the to the house, and I think we have to bear that in mind. So uh, that's that's a very good point. So uh, everyone, you know, if you if you need any architectural consultation, please look for Esmond, and these are his details uh, on the screen. Uh, you can contact him directly, or if if you are uh, if you or you can contact through us. Uh, like our Facebook page, uh, Luke and I are actually a real estate agent. And uh, Between Property, it's, um, it's our brand where we help uh, our clients uh, in the real estate needs. So uh, like our page, subscribe to us. We actually will have this kind of talk show every week on a Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. So once again, thank you, Esmen. I uh, really appreciate your time. And uh, for those questions that we have not answered, we will definitely go through, go through that tonight. And hopefully, we will answer that uh, accordingly as well. So yes. All right. Thank um, you so much, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe, stay safe everyone. See you. Stay safe. Stay safe.